Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So in this lecture, we'll try to see what are the methodologies that we are supposed to understand before doing the brick work. Right now, we have got an idea. What are the different types of bricks and all? But I'll be taking you to few of the you know uh, work methodologies and we'll try to see. Okay. Anyhow, uh, all these things will be dealt in a more detail when I bring a new course on advanced construction methodology, where we'll be taking up uh, construction of the water tank and all those things. But anyhow, uh, for our understanding, uh, I'll try to explain you a bit part of this. Okay. Now it is written here procedure for concrete block masonry and all these things are written. So I'll read it out already. We have understood, but we'll check it out. Okay. So what is written? This is your preliminary preparations. That means even before you start your block work and all, we need to check out the plan for that. I'll show you one of the drawing I have. Okay. Now let us say this is a house what I'm constructing. Okay. Let us say I already done the construction of this. That is a bare structure. Now I want to do the brickwork. Now to do a brickwork, I'll check out all these drawings. Okay. You can see I have a column here. I have a column here. So this is actually a brickwork for me. Okay. Now again, when I do a brickwork here, let us say I'll take it to one part. Yeah. Let us say, see this particular portion, you see it is written, right? This much portion is window. I have a window here. I have a window here. So that means when I do the brickwork, I should make sure that I'm not doing a brickwork in this portion. And also you can see it here. I have a window here. I have a window here, right? And even in this portion, I shouldn't do the brickwork. Whereas this middle portion, there's no window. So I can do the brickwork up to, I mean, in this portion, I can do the brickwork. You're getting my point. So in this way, we need to look at the architectural plan and only in the architectural plan will get an idea where, where the brickwork has to be done. So in this way, if I try to show you one more structural drawing, now let us see this one of the plan, what I'm showing again, just by looking at it, you can see, see again, if you remember, I have a window here, right? So that means in this portion, I cannot do a brickwork and also I have a window here. So I cannot do a brickwork here, but this middle portion, I don't have anything, right? So that means I can do my brickwork in this portion. Similarly, I can do a, do a brickwork in this portion. I can do a brickwork in this portion. Again, I have a window here. Then of course I have a ventilator here. So, but uh, the ventilator will come at the height of seven feet. So up to the, up to the seven feet level, you can do the brickwork and for the ventilation, you have to leave this space. Got it. So in this way, all those things will be written in the architectural drawing and in the architectural drawing, you're supposed to see it. And based on that, you have to do, you have to start your block work, right? So that is how it has to be understood. So that is the main intention of showing you this structural drawing. And especially the architectural drawing. Okay. And especially you're not going to get uh, anything else. So by looking at it, you can decide where the brickwork are going to come and all. Okay. Yeah. So now we'll go back to this again. Yeah. So check the layout according to GFC drawing for the door window and service openings, stiffener wall and column location. What is trying to tell you have to look into the uh, architectural drawing. And similarly, if I show you one more drawing, yes. Now, for example, see here, we have done a block work here, right? We have done a block work here but we haven't done any block work here because there's a door coming. Now, what is this length of the door? Usually let us say it will be like, let us say it's a one feet from here to here and from here to the bottom of the lintel, this will be a seven feet height. So this much area they're going to mention, okay. In the elevation and all, what should be the uh, door size and all. Similarly, here also I have a door coming again up to here. I don't, I don't have anything. There's an opening, right? So again, all those things will be mentioned in the drawings and based on that, we are, we are going to do the execution. See here again, your uh, left opening for the door, right? So in this way, we have done again, you can see up to here, we have put a lintel beam over this. It will, they, they are going to mention whether you are going to do a block work or whether you are going to uh, keep the glass over this. So in the, if, in, if it is a drawing, if it is mentioned, you have to give a glass here, then you don't have to do this block work. If it is not mentioned and again, the same blo block work you have to continue up to here. Got it. So in this way, we are going to do all these things and that is how the uh, execution is to be done again. You can see it here also. See they are left opening here, right? Because you are going to put a door. Got it. So in this way, we need to understand. So that is what, what do you mean by the first line? Check the sequence of other activities, which may cause damage to the fresh mass and work like heavy movements, vibration, etc. Check the layout of a right angle and verticality and line with respect to the structural beam and column. Interconnection with the vibrating structure should be avoided. So this we already seen, like if you go back, if you remember when I was explaining you about how to keep the right. So this is what they're trying to tell when you're putting a brickwork, make sure this particular line with a beam, it is, uh, you know, parallel to this uh, particular brickwork, this, this beam and this brickwork is parallel to each other. So all those things you need to take care of. Then after that, uh, yeah, check for the adjacent RCC structures finish. The joining of RCC and masonry portion should be rough for better bonding, racking or punching can be done again for the very same reason. Like I mentioned, 
when i was uh, explaining about the hacking you saw it here right how these people have done the hacking so i'll go back maybe It's not here. Yeah, you can see it here how the hacking was done, isn't it? So if you see here, all this hacking were done, right? So it's the same thing what is written that uh, the joining of RCC and the masonry position should be rough for better bonding. Racking or punching can be done. The block used for masonry need to be soaked fully in water for six hours or until the air bubbles cease to appear before immediate use, right? That means, uh, like I mentioned, the best practice is to uh, soak it in the water for 24 hours. If not, you can even soak it for water in six hours. And after that, you can try to use it. Or they are saying that when you try to dip this uh, bricks into the water, right? Air bubble are going to come up. So the moment the air bubble stops, after that, you can start to use your brick, right? Next is preparation for the cement mortar. Right now, we were understanding about the bricks. Now, coming to the cement mortar, the sand, cement and water uses for a masonry mortar need to meet all the requirements as specified. The ratio of cement and sand for the motor is one is to see that six, that is one part of cement and six part of sand for a 200 mm, 230 mm thick wall and one is to four for 115 uh, mm thick wall, right? So if you're putting a 115 mm thick wall, then your ratio is one is to four. If you're doing it for a 230 mm thick, it is one is to six. Why is that so? Because your 230 mm thick brickwork, it is a thick brickwork, right? It will have enough strength. So in that case, you can uh, decrease the strength of your motor. See, one thing you need to understand. What do you mean by one is to six and one is to four? That means if I want to prepare, let us say, I'll do it in this way. If I take this as my cylinder, okay, let us say this is a container, okay? Yeah, if I take a container and let us say in this, if I want to prepare one is to six part of uh, sand and uh, motor. So what I'm going to add, I'm, I'm going to add one part of cement and six parts of sand. So what will happen? The volume will become more, isn't it? Because six part of sand you're adding and one part of cement. So volume will be more here. So since the volume is also more, what will happen? The strength is less here because one part of cement and six part of sand you're adding. But here you see one part of cement and four part of sand. In comparison to this ratio of one is to six, your one is to four part is richer because you are adding four times the sand. See, if you're adding, let, so if you're not able to understand, if, if I don't mix the sand, what will happen? This is also one, this is also one. So strength remains the same. The moment you add sand into the mix, the strength is going to come down. In the same way, the moment you add the sand, the strength is going to come down. Here, six times you are adding the sand. That means more sand you are adding here. Here, four times you are adding the sand. That is less amount of sand is added. Sand is nothing, but you can call it as a kind of a impurity, okay? Okay, in that case, what will happen? The strength is going to decrease, right? So if you add more sand, your strength is decreased in comparison to one is to four. Since 115 mm thick wall is a very small wall, it will not have enough strength. If wall itself doesn't have enough strength, then what we are supposed to do, we are going to increase the bond thickness. You're getting my point? See, again, you need to understand one more thing. If this is one brick, this is second brick. So how these bricks are going to get the strength? This, these bricks are going to get the strength because of the cement motor that we're introducing, right? Yeah. So if you put a one is to, since now, if you're putting a one is to four uh, mix here, in that case, what has happened? Your mix itself is rich. If your mix itself is rich, it is, it will have a very good bond between them. Since your 100 mm thick wall is a very small wall, the thickness is very small. It will not have enough strength. If the wall doesn't have enough strength, the bond should be good. So that is why here we're decreasing the ratio. That means we are making a richer mix in comparison to one is to six. Got it? Yeah. Next is measuring box or weighing scale to be used to maintain the ratio properly. Okay. That means you're going to either do a weigh batching or either uh, making use of a uh, measuring box, right? The sand and cement need to mix thoroughly in a dry condition. And then the water to be added has required and mixed thoroughly. Mixing to be done by mix, mix mechanical mixer, unless otherwise approved by the engineer in the charge. So as far as possible, you have to do the mixing with the of a mixer machine. Otherwise, uh, you can even ma make use of hand mixing, provided you, uh, the approval should be taken by the site, enge site engineer and you have to take proper care of the mix. Water can be added as per consistency required to fill the joint. Excess amount of water may cause segregation in the motor, which we are already known. The motor once mixed with water need to be consumed within 30 minutes. That is whatever uh, cement motor you prepare, no? within 30 minutes, you have to make use of it in the brickwork. Got it? So this is one flow chart, what we have understood. In this way, 
uh, I'll be showing you another flow chart. Okay, so that we get an idea again. What are the tools required for the mass sand work? Obviously, I require cement. Reverse sand is required. Of course, a brick is required. Water is required. We call this as a plumb bob. We call this as a measuring tape. This is called as mason square, or you can call this as a right angle. And of course, you can call this as a spirit level, or you can call it as a mason square. Okay. So these are the different materials it is required. Other than that, you require a shovel in order to mix. If it is a hand mixing, a spade uh, to mix the coarse grade, mortar pan to carry your cement mortar. If you're using a machine, you require a mixer machine. Water tanker is required for uh, for adding a water. And if it is a loader, anyhow, is not required unless you're doing a longer, you know, distance. I mean, you're carrying your mortar to a longer distance. A level travel is required and a hand travel is required. So these are the few equipments that we require for the mass and reworks. And then I'll be taking you to few other things. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go to this and this is how it has to be understood. Again, see, uh, I'm showing you different uh, checklist and different methodology. Uh, whatever is uh, understood to its well and good because different company have their own methodology. That is why I'm showing you all these things. Again, check the base surface. It should be rigid and free from loose materials, debris and soil. Once you're done before laying the brickwork, make sure your uh, slab is, I mean, whatever floor you have, it is clean from all the waste materials. Lay the mixed cement mortar as a base. Mortar to level the base surface. The surface to be wet before applying the mortar. Lay the brick over the bed mortar with the frog part up. Frog part up in the sense, whenever, if you have seen the brick right now, like this is a brick what I have. If I show you the front side, in the front side, what will happen? You'll be getting a kind of a depression. So depression in the sense, you'll be having you know, a small kind of a hole in this way. Got it? You might have seen. This is called as frog. So this frog will create a kind of a bond between the two brick. Over this, if I keep one another uh, brick, then you have a small uh, depression here. Okay, that means this much portion is actually going down in comparison to the other portion. So this is called as frog. So this frog will add a bond to your other brick. When you try to keep two brick together, this is called as frog, which is going to give a bond. Got it? So that is what it is trying to tell. Lay the brick over the bed mortar with the frog part up. This is a frog part up. Check the position and alignment of the first and the last brick in the first layer. Lay the first brick based on the line of the first and last brick with providing a gap for the vertical joint. Right? This is a vertical joint. The mortar joints to be filled fully. Whatever mortar joints you have, no, you have to fix. You have to fill it properly. Continue for a subsequent layers. After three or four layers, the level and alignment to be checked vertically or carefully. That means, let us say four bonds you have put. I mean, four layers you have put. Then try to check whether you are getting exactly vertical or not. All the joints to be racked well for better bonding to plaster. Okay. And then the mat, now one thing you have to remember whenever you do this uh, brickwork and all, no, minimum seven days you have to do the curing. Again, you have put a cement mortar into that, right? So, again, there's a cement in that. So, I don't want that water to be operated. So, that is why again you have to do a curing. So, minimum seven days you have to do at any cost. Then, of course, this is a return use proper PP and barricade and area properly as per the specification. Again, when you work in bigger company, we have to prepare all these things. So actually, these things are prepared by QAQC people. I'll write it here. QA is quality assurance and then you have quality control. Okay. Quality assurance is on the paper. That is in paper, you are written all these things, isn't it? That this, this is how it, is, it, it has to happen and all. So this is called as quality assurance plan. And practically, when you put it at the site, it becomes your quality control. That means quality, through a control, you try to make sure whatever points you have written on the paper, it is practically happening on the site. So quality assurance is on the paper and quality control is what you can try to achieve on the site. Got it. So again, we have a different department for this. When you try to work, if you have a very good fundamentals, if your engineering knowledge is good, then you can try to become a QA QC engineers where you will be in charge of all these things. You have to make sure whenever the work is going on, you should make sure everything is happening according to the things what you have written. And finally, it is written in this way, prepared by check by Akshay, Akshay approved by Akshay. Got it. And now whatever it was mentioned here to put it in a better way, I'll show you through a PPT now. Uh, yeah. So if I go there, so this is understood. So you can see it here. See how the alignment has been done. No? We have put a first uh, base layer here. This is a hollow block. What we are used. No issues. Again, with the help of a spirit level, we're ch trying to check the alignment of this. Similarly, you see it here. Uh, this is the see one, two, three, four, almost five bonds you have finished. Again, we have fixed one, uh, you know, uh, cap here and we are trying to check the alignment of this, whether uh, the particular brickwork what we have done is exactly uh, you know, in the same line or not. Similarly, you see it here also with the help of a spirit level, we're trying to check whether this is exactly vertical or not, right? So all these things check you need to do on the side and see how properly this cement mortar racking has been done, isn't it? 
properly or inserted the motor and proper shaping and all pointing is done nicely right so in this way you have to do all these things got it again you have to check the right angle right angle in the sense we have seen that uh, mason square right that is right angle you will try to keep your right angle here if you want i'll do it here i'll keep my right okay it's not possible okay i'll keep a right angle here and i'll keep it here okay so in this i'll try to check whether i'm getting exactly 90 degree or not whether this line is properly 90 degree or not so in this way we need to check all these things and that is how the quality control will happen practically on the side got it yeah again you see here now if you look here here only we have done the bare structure right and we have stored the brick work, uh, block work here so before you start you're going to do the marking or let us say i want to start my block work in this area then what i'm going to do first thing is that you have to do the racking of this column up to this height right and here also then you uh, put the cement mortar to this cement mortar and in the bottom also you put the cement mortar and then you tie a string from this column to this column so that you get a proper alignment and then you start arranging your block work so all these are the preliminary activities that you're supposed to do before you start doing the work got it so you can see how the block work has been stored here and based on that you're going to do the execution same here as well right but one thing you remember you will have to leave a 20 mm space from the outer face of the column so that you can properly keep it and then later it will help you in plastering and all got it yeah similarly uh yeah most of the things we have covered and then we'll check into the uh, boq again for boq you know in boq everything will be written you check here for the boq what is written providing and constructing burnt brick masonry with approved quality of modular brick of standard size of class designation 7.5 newton per mm square with cement motor of 1 is to 8 for superstructure including the cost of materials labor charges scaffolding curing and everything and this is a rate quoted by the contractor uh, for a per cubic meter again you have to do the quantity estimation like i did it for the footing and all and how, what is your quantity based on that the rate is given here got it so in this way again this is for the partition wall that is a four and a half inch thick wall so again it's written here construction of the partition walls uh, thick with a non-modular ground and so and so and this is a rate quoted by the contractor so in this way in the boq everything will be written based on that you are going to do the execution again see here right now you understood for the solid blocks again you can see it here providing uh, and constructing precast concrete solid blocks with a compressive strength not less than 5 newton per mm square it all depends what is what is the specification given based on that you are going to do the execution right so this is just a boq in the boq they will mention you what should be the ratio what uh, brick quality of the brick what it has to be what should be the size of your brick everything will be mentioned by them and based on that you have to do the execution on the side yeah again uh, you can see here also project boq they have mentioned it here you can see brick work in superstructure with 230 mm thick with the bricks of class de designation 15 cement motor of 1 is to 6 where one part of cement and six parts of coarse sand including providing and fixing the wall test everything they are going to mention it here okay based on that again for that if you want to understand more you can download this uh, cement mortar is2250 code book it's written code of code of practice for preparation and use of masonry mortars and through that you can get gain some additional knowledge okay but whatever i inform that is enough uh, you don't have to you know uh, understand more yeah so the same thing is mentioned here if you want i'll quickly uh, you know uh, uh, read it it's the same thing uh, we'll quickly read that and we'll see what is written there yeah yeah, quickly we'll take two of this okay so again uh, check uh, layout plan check orientation of the structure check the approved drawing for the mass entry work we understood then this is a material this is a flow chart what they are given material selection tool selection that what tools you are supposed to use uh, machinery selections arrange necessary arrangement for the safety scaffolding lighting and all get approval from the other department at the mep and the client before the start of the work mark the brick line has per the approved drawing check the location of the opening which i already mentioned you column and other wall intersection on the joints uh, cross check the marking with the other rcc member to maintain the line and alignment of the mass and wall so this is a right angle check the right angle of the brick wall to be constructed again all these things have made it in this way approved by so and so checked by so and so okay yeah again after that uh, again okay of course we need to understand this also quickly we'll finish this is like uh, how we, see uh, before we start with the work we have to check the quality of the bricks and all no? it's written here motor material selection River sand. If you are bringing a sand, you have to do the sieve analysis. You have to check the silt content in your sand. You have to check the bulking of a sand. You have to check the finest modulus and test on the deleterious material. In the same way, if you are bringing a cement, check the grade of a cement. Check the chemical properties of a cement. Check the setting time of a cement. 
check the finest modulus and also the compression strength. Similarly, we are using water, right? For water, you have to check the pH value, then the acidity and alkalinity test, then the TDS, that is the total dissolved solids. Again, it is mentioned here, internal and external walls protected by the plaster, the grade of mortar can be used in between 1 is to 6 to 1 is to 8. It all depends on your building. Okay, but always remember, internal walls, we always try to keep lesser ratio compared to the uh, external wall. That means, let us say, if I have an internal wall, for internal wall, I'll use 1 is to, let us say, 5 ratio. Whereas for external wall, I use one is to four. Got it? Always this ratio what you're using, no? That means what I'm trying to tell is external wall, external wall, wall ratio will be ratio or external wall will be will be a rich mix. Will be a rich mix. Why is that? It is a rich mix because external wall is subjected to more sunlight, more air, more temperature, and all. So that means from durability point of view. I want to make my rich mixer, right? So that is why always for the external wall, we keep a richer ratio in comparison to the internal wall. Whereas the internal wall, what will happen? There's no much exposure to the sunlight, yeah, air, water and all. So there you can make use of a little less richer mix comparison to your external, external wall. Got it? So this is the main reason. So that is why they have given it here, right? 1 is to 6 to 1 is to 8. So let us say, how do you decide? Let us say I want to pick 1 is to 6 and 1 is to 8. Where you are going to put 1 is to 6, 1 is to 6 I am going to do for external plastering, that is external wall and 1 is to 8 I am going to make use for the internal brickwork and all. Same for the plastering also, okay, yeah. And internal and external walls where vibration in the building, grade of motor can be used not less than 1 is to 6. So this is specification, wherever you have a walls which is subjected to vibration and all, let us say you have a machine and all, in that case you don't make use of a ratio less than 1.6. For wall thickness 200 mm or above, the ratio of motor is 1 is to 6. For wall thickness less than 200 mm, the ratio of motor is 1 is to 4, including the number of uh, MS bar at every third layer. We'll try to see what is this MS bar later, but you understood, right? Because since you're reducing the thickness of your wall, the stiffness is going to come down. So if the stiffness is going to come down, I don't want to make a uh, weaker mix. I want to make a richer mix. That is why I'm going for 1 is to 4. I could have used one, 1 is to 6 also, but what has happened? Since the thickness of the brickwork has itself come down, so it won't have enough stiffness. So again, it is saying after every third layer, you have to prepare MS bar. That means to put it in a better way, let us say this is the first layer of a brick. Okay. I'm putting in this way. This is the first layer I have done. Okay. Then I'm going to do the second layer. I'll take use of a second layer. After second layer, I'm going to put another one layer. That is my third layer. So now after third layer, what you're supposed to do, no? what is mentioned? At every third layer, you have to make use of a MS bar. That is mild steel bars you're going to get. So what you, that is, or you even you can make use of a 6 mm rebar. Okay. And whatever 6 mm rebar you get, let us say this is my 6 mm rebar. And I'll insert my 6 mm rebar in this. And then again, I'll do a band over that. And again, I'm going to do the construction. So why this has to be done? Since your wall thickness is less, no, I want to bring in the stiffness in my wall. How can you bring a stiffness in this wall? By providing a kind of a RCC. And RCC in the sense, reinforcement concrete. That means we're bringing two additional rebars into the brickwork so that you're giving additional stiffness to that got it so that is how it is supposed to be understood yeah so most of the things have uh, made you understand and i think uh, we have done everything uh, last one portion is left out we'll check out this also okay quickly i'll read it out block should be again it is mentioned like we understood about the bonds and all right english bond flemish bond and all but which one we are supposed to use again there will be written in the uh const this thing methodology so it's written here block should be laid in english bond unless specified and should be well bonded. Every core should be truly horizontal and wall should be truly in plumb. We understood. The vertical joints of the consecutive core should not come directly over one another and vertical joints in the alternate core should not come directly over one another. What is trying to tell us? See, always we have to remember, I'll show you through a drawing itself, I mean through an image. So whenever you put up a brickwork, no, make sure your first layer and second layer, they're not coming uh, together. That means what I'm trying to tell is, Uh, here and you will try to understand. See, this was my first layer, right? Where is the joint? I have one joint here. This is my second joint. When I keep the next one, no, I don't want the next layer joint also to come in this line. You have to make it alternate. Now, let us say you brought, brought a joint here. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep a full brick, full block, and you can see a joint coming here. So, in between these two joints, I brought one more joint. Similarly, you see, in between these two joints, I brought one more joint. Got it? So, in this way, you are supposed to do the block work. 
and you can see it here also how they have done you see they have put one full uh, lateral stone half full full now again you see the bonding see one is here next is here next is here right why all those things has to be done because again you can see it here practically see how they have done it right the one block is here that uh, bonding i mean this uh, particular uh, what you call bonding is here it's a bonding here again they have a mark here here right nothing none of this particular block work has this particular line in the same line because tomorrow let us say if there is a small crack also what will happen that crack will not propagate if you give everything in the same line then if there is a small crack in one portion then throughout your block work the crack is going to transfer so if i want to erase that crack what i'm going to do i'm going to separate out the bond in this way so by keeping it in an alternate way what i can do i can avoid the um, what is that uh, cracks in my structure you can see it here also right see one they have done completely racking is here next they have done it here this this line is not same but again one thing you have to understand what is mentioned here yeah vertical joints in the alternate course should come directly over one another what, what do you mean by this vertical joints in the alternate course should come directly over one another that means yeah so this is my one layer this is my second layer and this is my alternate layer it's trying to tell us this and this line this line and this line should be together similarly this line and this line should be together right you're getting my point again where is alternate after this this is not alternate this is alternate this is not alternate this is alternate so this line this line in every alternate course it has to be same you see it here again this line in every alternate course it has to be same right so this is what uh, they're trying to tell us and based on that we are going to do the execution on the side got it same thing you can observe here also you have a line here you don't have it here then you have it here so in this way you are supposed to do the work on the side yeah after that half or cut block shall not be used expect except when needed to complete the course the racked rcc surface should be treated with the cement sand one is to one mortar first that means whatever racking we had done no? we have to uh, put the cement mortar there so there you have to make use of a richer mix so that is a cement one part and sand one part yeah so in every course the corner block need to fix with a proper plumb and line and every at every three or four course the entire masonry work need to be checked carefully for the line and verticality compulsory which you already understood you have seen it right see in this way we are going to check the plumb every time yeah the joints and be bed mortar thick need to be maintained in proper size all joints need to be filled with mortar fully no gap or no holes so if you see it here very nicely we have done the work there is no gap everything is properly uh, you know filled into the gaps and all yeah and then what it's trying to tell yeah no part of wall during its construction shall rise more than one meter above the general construction level this is very important so let us say today you have done the brickwork okay you can raise only up to one meter no part of wall during its construction shall rise more than one meter above the general construction level so today if you're constructing a block work only up to one meter you can do after that you cannot again raise it tomorrow again you have to do it so in one single day you cannot raise it more than one meter intermediate rcc bands and stiffener column need to be provided at the required location to increase the strength of the wall again you this is very important if you're using a 100 115 mm thick wall it is mandatory to provide 8 mm ms flag or ms bar at every third or fourth layer of the block wall they need to be anchored at their ends you got this so uh, like i mentioned if it, so you can see this right this is how that they are trying to do that every after three to four layer you have to insert two ms uh, steel uh, rebars so that you can give enough stiffness to this particular 150 mm thick wall wall yeah other than that rest all things we know cure the wall for at least seven days to attain its full strength the freshly laid block works need to be protected from rain and vibration all loose mortar and excess concrete to be removed from the wall rack all the joints to be plastered at the time of finishing the masonry provide the lintels and openings of the door windows and other opening to the distribute the load the maximum size of opening is 300 mm if no lintel is provided it yeah so in this way all those things will be mentioned and based on that we have to do the execution right so i hope you have got a complete idea regarding how the block work has to be done what is mentioned in the drawings how to understand the drawings how to do the work on the side all those things will be conveyed to you whatever i've explained here and this kind of things will be mentioned to you okay how you have to do the work and all you can try to make I, i'm not going to share all these things you can try to make your own notes out of this so that whenever you start to work on the site uh, you can you know uh, follow the same thing okay yeah so right in this way you can try to prepare your own notes because these are the copyright uh, uh, qaqc chart what i have that is why i'm not going to share it but maybe i'll try to uh, you know put a screenshot of this so that to get a better idea yeah so i hope you have enjoyed the lecture up to here 
you got a complete idea how all these things are supposed to be done on the site yeah so what they were trying to tell you can see it here no how they are trying to do. see uh, this is not a, this is actually a sealed band but still what they were trying to tell is if it is a 115 mm thick wall then after three to four layer okay you put a band something like this that is you can make use of two rebar and then you can put it here and then you raise the uh, raise the block work again so what will happen is going to give enough stiffness to the uh, brick work what you're trying to do got it yeah so i hope you have enjoyed the lecture up to here we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you <laughs>